Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is the Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. Beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hey, Kat, she's back. I'm back. We're all back together here. (laughs) All God's children is back. (laughs) I know. I feel so proud of myself, too. Yeah. No, this last weekend, I was was in San Francisco for the weekend, so I just flew back in like last night. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You were on a little mini vacation, you said. there. Yes. uh, That was some me time for me and a friend. I hadn't seen in a while. Which oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Had a good like post holiday holiday, and yeah, right on. I went to some museums. Like went to the San Francisco Public Library and hung out in their archives up there. Which I know, like that's like a really nerdy thing to say, but this librarian is very happy that she got to spend time. Well, there. a librarian <laughs> going to any place like that. I yes. mean, yeah, the, like the mm-hmm. libraries up in Washington, you know, mm-hmm. and everything state. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then Salem, and yeah, mm-hmm. up in Everett and all that. Uh, Wherever mm-hmm. the man, they got some major. Some they beautiful. go back and they're beautiful. You mm-hmm. want to check them out, even if you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you don't want to touch none of the books because it yeah. looks so perfect. <laughs> of course, right? Yeah, and yeah. with the San Francisco Library, their top floor is is essentially the city archives, right? And, oh, okay. Uh, and so I just walked in there, and I was like, I didn't have any particular research in mind, but I was like. What do you have that you're particularly proud of that you'd love to show me? And this lady that was working there, the librarian is a calligraphy librarian. And oh, okay. uh, and so she had this great collection of original calligraphy from from people, including people who lived in Portland. She was like, I got you, Oregonian. Oh, okay. Got you, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I got to see some some original calligraphy pieces and brought out for her for my friend who's into like rare books and stuff, some illuminated manuscript pieces and stuff. So Very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a good time. Uh, and definitely. then checked out some museums too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to the San Francisco Museum of Modern wow. Art. Yeah, I got to see some some great collections there and uh, and went to an underground comedy club. Yeah, we were kicking it, having a good time. So Right on. Yeah, mm-hmm. Wow. Hopping all over the city. <laughs> so I did absolutely nothing compared to what you did. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you had a good weekend. You made the best of it. That is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very cool. That sounds fun. Yeah, uh, yeah we just nerf wars, of course. Of course. I mean, we have the barriers and everything now. That's I mean, cool. yeah, I posted something on Facebook okay, and it's okay, like okay. we got like, mm-hmm. 22 guns and these barriers that blow up barriers and mm-hmm. and vests for all the kids that come over. They get the vest with right. all the ammo on it. And mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we got the whole nine yards. It's like, oh, I still haven't got my gun yet. I'm going to think I'm getting me a machine gun is what I'm going to okay. get one of the machine okay. guns I've been watching. I've been checking him out on the Nerf thing he watches, you know, and I'm like, that gun's pretty cool. Right? <laughs> yeah, oh, Best got yeah. one that says 45. Mm-hmm. Shoots. It's got clips mm. full of 45, you know, so you can literally in two clips, so you can whop out 90 and it's battery operated. Oh and gosh. when she pulls that one out, you know, like the kids don't shoot her, you know, because when she pulls that out, it's like on like Donkey Kong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that thing starts hearing it and just poop, 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 one right after another, man. It's like, yeah, oh, just some damage. It's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was just football and hanging out this weekend and all that stuff, enjoying the lovely weather that we had off and on. And it was like, it would stick around five minutes and it'll change for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. It does, so. yeah. Mm-hmm. But hey, hope everybody got out there and had a good time this last weekend and everything. And we do have some stuff going on here. Before we get going, though, I'd like to thank Trike City dispensary the oregon south coast fishermen otherwise known as the castaways just the jeweler and oregon coast vip marketing for sponsoring the insider report if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows on kciw just go to kciw.org and you will be on your merry way hey and we got a guest in the house yes. here we got mr fritz gearhart he is with the uh, redfish piano trio yeah welcome aboard here uh, glad to be here yeah you guys got a concert coming up this weekend a couple of them you're gonna be busy yeah we do well, yeah tell us all about it so i'm with the uh, uh the redfish music festival and so of course we we have our summer program which runs uh basically the first week of august uh, but we also, during the year, um, uh, put on a few concerts. So this year we have um, two tours. And so this tour coming up this coming this coming weekend, we have four concerts. We're going to be performing in uh, Port Orford, in uh, Coos Bay, Bandon, and then down in Crescent City. And that's uh, what I'm what I'm here for to to talk about. So we're going to be performing this is co- this coming Saturday. Um, what is that? Saturday, January 13th, 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the Cultural Center. 
So the Redfish Piano Trio, uh, you know, you, you hear the word piano trio and you think three pianos, but it's not three pianos. It's mm. uh, a piano, violin, and cello. It's a, kind of a classical combination, uh, common. So there's a lot of music written for that that uh, combination of instruments. And so I play violin. Okay. Um, and I have uh, some colleagues coming in. I'm going to be picking them up on Tuesday. We're going to be rehearsing and getting this ready. I uh, have a fun program, um, four different works, um, two uh, are kind of early, you know, relatively early classical music, Haydn and Beethoven. Uh, then we have a, a piece by Torina, who's a Spanish composer, beautiful uh, romantic music, and also a brand new piece, or relatively new, 2003, um, uh, by by Jennifer Higdon. So an up and coming American composer, beautiful work. It's called actually called Pale Yellow, uh, a really beautiful work. So so you know a lot of variety. Should be a, a really fun uh, afternoon performance. I hope you can uh, get out to to hear it. Thanks. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we've got we'll be recapping that down the line, and we'll give all the dates it's going at. But yeah, um, two of those concerts are at seven o'clock. So you got that's right one, and then one two p.m. one. All right. right cool. yeah. yeah, very cool. So. Well, how are you feeling about it? You're going to be re ready to rock and roll, huh? Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. I, I I love to be here. You know, I've actually lived on the coast for a while. I um, I have a, a house in Port Orford. Oh, okay. And so I come and go. Um, but I started this festival about a little over three years ago. So I was kind of kind of. It seems like a long time ago because we had that little COVID year there, you know? <laughs> yeah, that one, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was kind of going going over it in my head going, oh, yeah, wow, it was just three years ago. But mm -hmm. Three years ago we started this and um, we, we've been having a great time. So the, the next set of concerts is not until April and we have a guest coming for that. Uh, flute player and piano, so the, we'll we'll keep you posted oh, about those. Yeah. But of course, if you're interested, um, getting more information, it's called the Redfish Music Festival, and you can go to redfishmusicfestival.com and see our, of course, our events coming up and read more about what we do. All the dates and everything about mm -hmm. you guys. Yep, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep, I saw it. It's a good, good, good place. Summer program includes uh, students. So we have uh, 16 students that come from around the country and we work with them for a week and then they perform at the end of the week. Um, part of, um, yeah, actually one of our favorite events that we do is to bring them down, down this area, down to Crescent City and do the Redwoods. That's part of our our routine every summer um, and perform this with the students. Um, we had a great group last year, and so we're, we're looking forward to doing it again. Oh, right on. Yeah. So you're all from around here then? Yeah. Well, well, we um, actually, we come from all over the place. Oh, okay. I'm the one who's kind of the Oregon relatively, uh, you know, uh, okay. call me a native. I guess I lived here since 98. Um, but... Uh, most everybody else comes from all over the country. I mean, some of the students come local, mm -hmm. um, okay. but but also all over the country. Great. Um, yeah. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a good world one class there. Talent. Yeah. Yeah. Com mm -hmm. Coming up this weekend, like mm -hmm. I say, we recap it. Well, thanks for coming on, Fritz. Yeah. And, yeah. Glad you do and, it. Uh, yeah. Everybody, get out there and check that out. There's three opportunities. So there you go. Okay. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Right on. All right, thanks for being here. Yep, sure. Thank you for coming on board and so well. Catch you when it comes April when you get okay. that ready for another one. Make sure and come on down and talk about it. Okay, thanks a lot. All right. Oh, sweet. All right. Well, there you go. A little musical thing coming up this weekend. Only. Classical music, yeah, I say. No, yeah. it's cool that they're bringing in, like, you have the classics like Beethoven and mm -hmm. Hayden. But one thing that's really funny to me, like, people think classical and they think old, right? But classical is just a genre of music. They have contemporary right. pieces. I love that they're bringing that in, too, for people to appreciate. So, yeah. cool, it, man. Ain't going to be mm -hmm. no Jerry Lee Lewis going on, but it's, uh, you know, it's going to be beautiful, that's yeah, for sure. No, no, there's new stuff happening in classical as you well. You never know. I just want to you check in know. and see what's going on there. Yeah. I like absolutely. when they do that. When you hear something like that, you go to, you know, a classical music thing, and all of a sudden they throw in, you're like going, that's Led Zeppelin, man. <laughs> you know, you know you're, right. yeah, that's very cool when somebody <laughs> adds something in, you all of a sudden you listen to it, go, wait a minute. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, we got a music schedule here, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get go. that started. Plenty going on this month, starting things off with Cisco and Daltrey on the 13th, the 20th, and the 27th. They're going to be at the Brookings Harbor Farmer's Market, playing from 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., 
And then on the 31st, they're going to be at the Checo Activity Center playing from 11 a.m. to 1.30. Yeah, and Tortuga Mexican Restaurant on the 19th, they got Ranch Party up there 6 to 8. Yes, and the Mighty Steelheads are going to be playing on the 19th of January at the Inateca in Crescent City. Music there starts at 8 p.m. Yep, and Oxen Free Public House on the 9th. They'll have a Greg Russell 8 p.m. And then on the 23rd, it's an open mic with uh, James Dubatis at 8 p.m. Yes, yeah. and Ranch Party, again, is playing on the 19th at Tortuga Mexican Mexican restaurant from 6 to 8 p.m. Thought we'd reiterate that. Yep. And the Elk Valley Casino at the Beta Green Center on the 13th. They got Journey Revisited, 8 p.m. And on the 27th, they got stand-up comedy with Kabir Singh from America's Got Talent, and that'll be at 8 p.m. And then in the Warriors Bar and Grill, the music is at 7 p.m. On the 12th and 13th, Jesse Mead. On the 19th and 20th, Robert Tiernan. And on the 26th and the 27th, they got Hannah Pay singer. Yes, and P.A. and T. Roy are playing on the 20th. They're going to be at Coon Tai from 6 to 8. Yep, and then Mike Powell, he'll be playing on the 12th at the Brookings Elks Lodge, 7 to 9. And then on the 19th, you'll catch him at Chet Cobra and Company, 6 to 8. Yes, and we have a music lineup here from Misty Mountain Brewing. Music there is always 6 to 8 p.m. On the 12th, it's going to be good old P.A. and T. Roy. On the 19th, Mr. Long Goddard. And on the 26th, Steve Nelson. That's right. And so that's our music schedule. If you're a band out there or musician and you'd like to get your gig going on here on the Insider Report, all you got to do is send it to CaptainCurry541 at gmail.com or get on and send it to KCIW and we'll get her, get her on board for you. Yeah. Right. It's easy. And then getting into some events here, Four Castle Books and Gallery located at 553 Checo Avenue in Brookings is presenting a spoken word open mic. It's going to be featuring Original poetry and prose, sounds like all are invited there, on the 11th of January at 5.45 p.m. Yep, and then SWAC is presenting Stories of the Redwood Parks. This is a Southwestern Oregon Community College. Curry Campus invites the community to join them on Thursday, January 11th, 12 to 1, for a presentation by Rick Sermon, retired superintendent of the Redwood National and State Parks. Stories of the Redwood Parks. Rick Sermon has worked more than 50 years among the forests and redwood parks along the California coast and has stories about the majestic giants that you will not want to miss. Rick will present a natural history of the redwoods and the cultural history going back to the gathering of the Bohemian Grove in 1917 that was instrumental in saving the redwoods. Only 5% of the old growth redwoods still exist. Rick will tell us how these remaining trees were saved and discuss their future. This is a free program sponsored by the Friends of Curry Campus and will be held in the community room of Southwestern Curry Campus, 96082 Lone Ranch Parkway, that right off of Highway 101 in Brookings. Bring a friend and a brown bag lunch is what they say. All right. And circling back to some music coming up on the coast here, the Redfish Piano Trio. They're going to be in concert January 11th through the 14th on the Oregon coast, as well as a little bit of the California coast, of course, on January 11th. They're going to be at the Lutheran Church in Port Orford at 7 p.m. On the 12th, they're going to be at the First Presbyterian Church in North Bend at 7 p.m. And then on the 13th, they're going to be playing at the Cultural Center in Crescent City. It's a matinee there at 2 p.m. And then on the 14th, they're going to be playing at the Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Bandon. Music there starting at 3 p.m. Tickets are $20 for adults, 18 and under. Get in for free. And if you want to get tickets in advance, you can go to redfishmusicfestival.com. Hey, Lucky 7 Casino is presenting Comedy Night with headliner Steve Bruner. This is happening on the 13th, 7 p.m. Feature act Jim Farrell opens for headliner Steve Bruner. Steve has been seen regularly in comedy clubs, television shows, and appearances across the country. Doors open at 7 p.m. and this show starting at 8, Talawa Event Center. Tickets are on sale now, online, or at the door. You can purchase tickets at www.eventbrite.com. Now, it's a casino, so you must be 21 years or older to attend this event. For more info on this, you can call them at 707-487-7777. Now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm sticking with birthdays here. Here's a few quotes from Revolutionary War hero Alexander Hamilton. He was born January 11th, 1755, and he says, A well-adjusted person is one who makes the same mistake twice without getting nervous. <laughs> he is a nation which can prefer disgrace to danger, is prepared for a master, and deserves one. 
He says, I never expect a perfect work from an imperfect man. And last but not least, the art of reading is to skip judiciously. Hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Alexander Hamilton with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. Oh, there Hamilton. we go. There we go. See? And hey, we're going to get into some more events happening here, including something coming up from the Brookings Emblem Club. They're having a membership social. The Brookings Emblem Club number 265 invites the public to stop by their membership social on January 13th between 4 and 8 p.m. This is happening at the Brookings Elks Lodge, located at 800 Elk Drive in Brookings. Emblem Club members support local charities and serve their community through volunteerism and fundraising all year round. You can discover how you can join their team and give to those in need. You can enjoy refreshments and also enter to win a gift basket. A gift basket. All right. Yeah, that's always fun. Hey, Elk Valley Casino, located at 2021 Elk Ranch Road in Crescent City, is presenting Journey Revisited. This is happening on the 13th at 8 p.m. Some light of classic rock nostalgia as Elk Valley Casino presents Journey Revisited at the renowned Betty Green Event Center. Prepare to be transported back in time to the golden era of rock as Journey Revisited takes the stage, recreating the essence of one of the greatest American rock bands of all time, Journey. Tickets are on sale now at www.etix.com slash ticket. Doors open at 7 p.m. and with the show starting at 8 p.m. Now, you must be 21 or older to attend this one. It's a casino. But yeah, I got to see Journey twice back in the day. 79 was the first time I saw him, and then in the 80s somewhere mm-hmm. I saw him. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I got to see him twice. Like that was a, pretty cool. Sounds like a good time. It was, they were fun. Yeah, All right, yeah. for this event coming up, I just want to reiterate, this is what's on the copy. This is not coming from my brain. The 101 Bar and Grill is presenting Micromania Midget Wrestling. Mm-hmm. This is going to be on the 14th of January from 6 to 9 p.m. Micromania Midget Wrestling is a wrestling show with comedy thrown in to make for a big event, not necessarily big people. And this is happening at a bar, so age is 21 plus for this. Doors open at 6 p.m. The show starts at 7 p.m. There's a general admission cost, and again, you have to be 21 or older to attend. Oh, yeah. I went to the first one that they did down there a few (laughs) years back. Yeah, it was pretty, that was cool. Yeah. (laughs) It's yeah, classic wrestling. Got some pictures with him. I was doing, you know, the newspaper thing. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it was pretty mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Oh. Hey, SWAC is presenting Whale Watching the Oregon Coast. Join them for a presentation by paleontologist Wynn McLaughlin, Southwestern's Assistant Professor of Geology for Whales of the Oregon Coast, present, past, and really past. On Wednesday, January 17th at 6.30 p.m., Coos County residents can join them in person in the Umpqua Hall Lecture Room 184 on the Coos Campus, 1988. Newmark Drive, Coos Bay, and Curry County residents can join them for a watch party in the community room on the Curry Campus, 96082 Lone Ranch Parkway in Brooklyn. With whale watching being a major tourist attraction on the Oregon coast, it's easy to think of these iconic animals as a key feature for our region. But this association goes much deeper. The Oregon coast is one of the most important places on earth for the study of fossil whales. How and when did whales become mostly peaceful giants we see today? Well, you can join paleontologist Wynne McLaughlin as she takes you on a tour through deep time on the Oregon coast to investigate everything from miniature fossil dolphins to the oldest baleen whale to some truly fearsome predators of the past. For more information about the lecture series, you can contact Dr. Wynne McLaughlin, Assistant Professor of Geology, at 541-888-7002. Right. And hey, Danaka is presenting Ji Yoon Kim at the Crescent Elk Auditorium. That's down at 994 G Street in Crescent City, happening on the 27th at 3 p.m. Danaka presents their third concert of the 2023-2024 performance series with Ji Yoon Kim, featuring a blending of poetry and music. Ji Yoon delights audiences with a sparkling combination of sensitive artistry, broad emotional range, and impeccable technique in her innovative concert experiences. This concert will include video, poetry, piano, and incredible true life stories. And this will be a special matinee performance. Tickets are available online at denaka.eventbrite.com. And after January 5th, they're going to be available at Del Nor Office Supply in Crescent City. That's $20 for general admission. Seniors get in for $18. Students get in for $15. And any remaining tickets will also be available at the door. Hey, now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. 
Right, g'day cat, g'day mates, Bushwhacker Bruce here and welcome to this week's Bit of Weird History for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know? Nature has some strange plants out there. It's true, and here's the story of a few of them. Arcadia trees, which grow all over the African savanna, have a unique defense system. When animals like antelope start to gobble up its leaves, the tree increases tannin production to levels that are toxic to animals. But that's not all. The tree then emits a cloud of ethylene gas that travels through the air, reaching other trees so they too can begin producing more tannins. And there are 28 kinds of corpse flowers. You might not know about the plant genus Raphlesia, but you may have heard about the corpse flower. It's a rare type of jungle plant that attracts pollinating insects to its huge flowers by smelling like death and rot. In fact, there are 28 distinct species of leafless plant with flowers varying in size from 5 inches to 40 inches. Most of these flowers take 6 to 9 months to grow and will begin to decay within a few days. And, last but not least, did you know that there's a fungus that bleeds? Found all across the United States, particularly in the Pacific Northwest, the mushroom Hydalium pecci has a pretty unmistakable appearance, particularly when it's young. This fungus exudes a thick, dark red sap across a white cap, earning it numerous nicknames from strawberries and cream to devil's tooth to the bleeding tooth fungus. Fortunately, neither the fungus nor the sap are poisonous, but they are both said to be indelibly bitter. <coughs> Hope you enjoyed this week's Beer Wish with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. <laughs>
And then we've got time for a fundraiser here uh, featuring VFW Legacy Bricks. The local VFW post is raising money to fix its building, upgrade its heating, electricity, and to improve its landscape. They've raised approximately $30,000, but they need another $20,000 to complete the work. And they're selling legacy bricks that will highlight the entrance of the building, featuring messages of memory to veterans respected by their loved ones. Each brick will cost the donor $100, and every purchased brick will be laid professionally in front of the post for everyone to observe. They will also conduct more yard sales, provide meals for a nominal donation, and sponsor other groups and their activities. Once the building's completed, VFW Post 966 will serve the veterans and the community of Brookings. They're active in the Brookings community, a member of the Brookings Chamber of Commerce, and a supporter of the Brookings City Council. They support our veterans providing ceremonies, funerals, and memorials. VFW Post 966 is a 501c19, a nonprofit group with all members being veterans of foreign wars. Their national charter began in 1939. They have approximately 20 million members throughout the United States. And the Post 966 is located at 507 Pacific Avenue in Brookings. Yep. And I'm going to give one more out here. KCIW has a soapbox series they asked me to announce here. KCIW is giving folks a chance to speak their mind on a new show called KCIW Soapbox. Basically, KCIW is offering two minutes of their time to anyone who has something to say. There are a few rules, uh, like no cussing, no slandering, no advertising. But other than that, folks can share what's on their mind. The studio is open every Wednesday from 2 to 3 for people to come in and record. So, very cool. A little something, something else for, you know, KCIW to offer to the public there. That's oh, nice. Come on and tell what you feel about it. <laughs> and people will listen. Hey, well, that's it, man. It's time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producer, Brother Tom, for all his great work making us look and sound good on the radio. And I want to thank you all for tuning in to this week's Insider Report. Please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report at KCIW.org. And while you're there, you can check out the live streaming as well. So, hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And we are signing off at Keep It Real and Spread the Love and the Peace every chance you get. And, hey, we'll we'll see see you out out there. there. Bam. Bam! Happy New Year, too, by the way. Happy New Year. (laughs) (laughs) Finally. Yeah, we got it. We're doing another one. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.